I think we can all agree, climbing sucks, right? Wrong. Hey, what are you doing here? Whew. Don't listen to that guy, because by the end of this video, I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna enjoy climbing just as much as I do by simply applying these techniques. Hey, get over here. What was going on over there? Apparently that guy really doesn't like climbing, but lucky for you, we do. Welcome back to Joy Bike, I'm Mike. And I'm Chase, and together we're gonna help you climb better. To make the climbs a highlight of your Joy Ride, we're gonna need a few things. To start, we're gonna have a parking lot, and then we'll move on to your local climbing trail. We also need a helmet and a bike that fits you properly. Now this is not gonna be a bike fit video and a lot of your bike fit can come down to personal preference, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna recommend a saddle height that allows for a slight bend in the knee at the bottom of your pedal stroke. Before we get into what makes climbing so joyful, let's talk about some misconceptions that can make it not so fun. We wanna avoid unconnected choppy pedal strokes. Instead, we wanna focus on having a smooth, consistent rhythm. Without having smooth and consistent pedal strokes, clip pedals aren't going to make our climbs any easier. And the last thing is that thinking climbing is going to be the worst part of our ride. And that's just plain wrong because there is no bad part about riding bikes. Creating this mental shift is going to do more favors for your riding than you can even imagine. To make this video as simple as possible, we're gonna break it into three parts. So part one is going to be identifying and managing our cadence on the trail. Part two is gonna be adjusting body position in response to the terrain. And part three will be going out and practicing on the different types of terrain that we're going to encounter while out on the trail. So let's get into part one. A parking lot <laughs> in a video on how to climb. Yeah, you're gonna to have to explain this one to me. It's a little confusing, I know, but just like most of the other skills we teach here on the channel, coming out to a parking lot or cruising around our neighborhood is going to allow us to correctly identify a consistent, smooth pedal cadence, which is only gonna help us when we get out there and start climbing up a trail. In fact, being in a parking lot just made me think of something. Driving our car to the trailhead to go ride can be really similar to climbing on our mountain bike except for our cars automatically doing a lot of the hard work without us even thinking about it. Here's how. As you navigate up the road to the trailhead, you're gonna notice your car up and down shifting pretty often. It's doing this to keep the engine in the optimal power range for maximum efficiency. These constant shifts help the car maintain speed and keep the engine from overworking. So let's apply this concept to the bike. As we pedal around, let's try to identify a cadence that feels sustainable for a long period of time. If you feel like your legs are spinning under you so fast that you can't keep up with them, shift into a harder gear. And if you feel like you're laboring for every single individual pedal stroke, shift into an easier gear. The key is finding that cadence or that pedal rhythm that feels productive yet sustainable for a long period of time. Cadence is unique to everyone and is often linked with your fitness level or level of experience on the bike. So give yourself a little bit of grace as you start to figure this out and don't compare yourself to other people around you as you're riding. Obviously, it's very rare to find a trail that is a consistent grade from the bottom to the top. Trails twist and turn, go from steep to flat and switch between rocky and smooth. Now throughout all of that, the key to good climbing is this. Your cadence is your north star. All of your shifting is a byproduct of keeping that cadence consistent. So as the trail steepens, shift into an easier gear to continue spinning at the same rhythm. As the trail flattens out, shift into a harder gear to do the same. There are definitely exceptions to this rule, especially when we get into more technical climbs and using a harder or easier gear intentionally to make it up and over obstacles. But for the majority of your base climbing, treating your cadence as this North Star is what's gonna get you up the climb more efficiently and give you more energy to spend when you do encounter those more technical climbs. Before we get into part two, a quick pop quiz. 
Being able to identify a proper riding cadence in your own riding is only going to help you unlock that joyride on the uphills that much quicker. So start here. Which one of these do you think is the best riding cadence and why? We would love to hear your response down in the comments below. Let's talk about our riding position while we're climbing. Now, if you've tuned into any of the tutorials that we've done here on this channel, this isn't gonna be a surprise to you. We wanna be in a central riding position as we're climbing. However, if this is something that is new to you, central riding position looks something like this. We want to have our weight centered over the bottom bracket on the bike. And what this is gonna do is create equal weight distribution between the front and rear tires. While we're in this position, we also wanna have slightly bent knees and elbows in a strong position. This is essentially home. As we begin to climb and the angle of the train we're riding on changes, naturally the angle of our bike is going to change as well. Now it's up to us to adapt to that change in angle so we can stay in control of our bike and in a central riding position. We adapt by either moving forward or backward on the bike as the angle of it changes underneath us. If we stay in that flat ground central riding position, well, we're gonna run into one of two scenarios. Our front wheel is gonna end up feeling really light and potentially washing out or just popping up off the ground. Or we'll end up in a position where our back wheel is spinning as we attempt to put power down into the ground, which will cause us to lose our drive. So how do we correct this? Well, on steeper climbs, we wanna shift our body weight forward to compensate for the steeper slope that we're riding up. Remember, the goal here is to have our weight centered over the bottom bracket so we can effectively create traction and put power down into the ground as we climb. But be careful, if you shift your weight too far forward, you might find yourself losing traction on that back wheel and spinning on loose or rocky terrain. On the other hand, if our weight is too far back, you're probably gonna find that your front wheel is lifting off the ground and this can lead to us losing control or just simply tipping over. As you encounter steeper climbs, ledges, or rocks, remember the body positioning that we are aiming for here. We want our weight centered over the bottom bracket. Now you'll probably find yourself adjusting around the cockpit of the bike pretty often, and this is completely okay. While you're doing this, really focus on what doesn't feel good to get to what feels right. The key here is to practice this balance and understand that we won't just be sitting in one single spot on the bike as we're climbing if we want to deliver efficient, effective power into the ground. We're gonna be moving back and forth on the bike as the terrain beneath us changes. Being conscious of these various body positions that are gonna keep us central on the bike are crucial to making this skill more enjoyable. This paired with practice is gonna help you conquer climbs that once seemed impossible. Now let's get into some pro tips, starting with this idea of chopping wood. Now we wanna avoid this and it usually happens when we're riding in the wrong gear and find ourselves in this rhythm of inconsistent choppy pedal strokes. It might feel like you're making a lot of progress with each one of these individual pedal strokes, but in the long run, they just lead to far greater energy expenditure than you really need to be giving out. Instead, let's focus on smooth, consistent circular pedal strokes to maintain the cadence that we discussed in part one. Have you noticed that as you're climbing up the trail, there always seems to be a rock or a root or a squirrel on the side of the trail that wants to come up and give your pedal a little smooch? Yeah, me too, and uh, my pedal's not super into it. So as I'm climbing up the trail, I'm using my central vision to spot my line while using my peripheral vision to check in on all of the obstacles passing underneath my bike. If I feel like I'm about to make contact with something, I'll just wait a moment and let that pedal stroke come after I pass by that rock. Uh, I can also use a half crank backwards to time that pedal stroke correctly. The goal here is just timing your pedal strokes to eliminate striking those rocks as you're going up. Now let's talk about line choice. If we're looking down at our front wheel, it's really hard to see what line we want to ride and we're most likely gonna end up stuffing our front tire into a rock and making climbing not that much fun. So instead what we wanna do is look up the trail and actively scan the trail, taking in all the trail conditions and trying to figure out what the best line choice is. As we're climbing and we're faced with a daunting task 
like a steep technical section or something that is long and drawn out, there are a few questions we can ask ourselves if we're actively scanning ahead. What's the best line choice for me to take during that section of trail? Am I in the right gear? And is there an opportunity for me to slow down my pedal cadence a bit, take a breath so I have more energy to expend when I get to that tricky section? Now that we've covered the fundamentals, let's talk about the different kind of climbs we can expect to find out there on the trail and how we can practice them. Whether you're facing a steep, punchy climb, a long sustained ascent, or a technical rocky section, there are a few techniques that'll help you get to the top with control and confidence. First up are steep and punchy climbs. These are generally pretty intense and they can catch you off guard if you're not prepared. The key here is to slightly shift your weight forward on the saddle while also leaning forward to keep your weight centered over the bottom bracket. As you start this ascent, slide forward a little bit on your saddle and lean into the handlebars. This is going to help you put your weight down into the bottom bracket, which will help your tires bite into the ground for maximum traction. Now keep in mind here, if you go too far forward, well, you're not gonna have all the traction you want in your back wheel. And same thing goes if you're too far back. The front end is gonna get light and it's gonna slide around and you might tip over. So focus on identifying that sweet spot where you're centered over the bottom bracket for the best results. Next, let's talk about long sustained climbs. The key here is finding your rhythm. We do this by finding a smooth and consistent cadence with our pedal strokes. Now keep in mind as the grade underneath us changes, we wanna shift through our gears to keep that cadence as smooth and consistent as possible. Don't be afraid to shift often. As the climb drags on, finding this smooth, consistent pace will help you from burning out. Now let's talk about the more technical climbs. These generally are the more tricky parts of climbing, and there's a good reason for that. There's so much change in terrain that our body ends up having to be pretty active. Think about this like kind of dancing with your bike. You want to stay loose as the bike moves beneath you, as you're adapting and solving for the terrain that you're covering. The trick to finding yourself enjoying climbs is to focus more on technique rather than trying to exercise brute force to get to the top. Pairing that with correct form and practicing these different type of climbs is going to make a world of difference when it comes to your riding. As you begin to incorporate these techniques into your riding, have some patience with yourself. As frustrating as climbing can be, I can almost guarantee you after a little bit of time and patience, you're going to love it just as much as I do. So why exactly do I love climbing so much? Well, I'm glad you asked. I believe that once you unlock the skill of climbing, there's something that happens that's almost spiritual. There's this really special thing that starts to occur when you're putting an insane amount of energy into a climb and it's almost happening instinctually. So what kind of climbs are my favorite? Well, it tends to be the long drawn out climbs. In these moments, I am able to be introspective, to think about things that are going on in my life, to reflect on goals and to process emotions. The rhythmic nature of pedaling also tends to be a form of meditation for me. Climbing effectively often also requires us to be present. This immense amount of focus on the bike often leads to unlocking a really fun flow state where time almost just slows down and you're able to be in the moment and focus on your breathing, focus on those pedal strokes and nothing else really seems to matter. And in these moments for me, thoughts really start to flow pretty freely. In fact, a lot of my creative process happens in these free flowing moments, whether it be for the channel or for my coffee company, Traction. If you're unfamiliar with Traction, go check it out. I think you might enjoy it. We're a writer owned coffee business Started it back in 2018, and we're really grateful to be able to roast world-class coffee and share it with our friends. If you're interested in joining the Traction family, we have a link down below with a coupon code where you can save 30% on your first order. And we'd be really stoked to hear what you think of the coffee. Just like sharing a cup of coffee with somebody, I also find that climbing next to somebody often breaks down barriers. Whether it's a new or old friend, there's a lot of times I find myself in very deep and vulnerable conversations with people. There's something special about riding next to somebody and suffering with them. And it really just tears down those walls and allows you to have a genuine conversation. 
Which really reminds me, bikes are truly joy machines. And now it's your turn. Get out there and start climbing up some hills. And remember, this is a tricky skill to master. So give yourself some grace, have patience, and take your time. There's no point in rushing up the hill if you're not having fun doing it. And as always, if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi, cruise down and hit the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it so other people just like you can see it as well. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Thank you guys for riding with us. You rule. Later. And I'm back. Thank you guys so much for joining us again on today's video. We really appreciate it and we hope you got some value out of it. While you're here, we have some other awesome videos already on the channel like Mountain Biking's Easy Button and How to Corner. So click on one of those because we would love to see you over there. Till next time, thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you on the next Joyride. <clears throat> to make this video as simple as possible, we're gonna break it into three parts. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I'm just over here looking at you like, <laughs> what's the first part, bro? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Outtake. <laughs>